Okay. Egyptian mummies. This is the third one I think I've done on these, but uh, Egyptian mummies, now they're finally doing some DNA with them. They're uh, being allowed to take their teeth, and they have perfected how to not taint the DNA. Still in doing so, what they're doing is checking everybody's DNA that's involved and then running the DNA, and if it skews at all, they just toss it. They recently went through 150 mummies and got three out of it that they knew were pure. They also did 186 mummies and got six out of it. And they also did 300 and something and got nine out of it. So you can see the ratio there is not fantastic. But it actually at least shows information. Once they know they have DNA, they have DNA. If they have partial, they're tossing it. They're making sure that they're not trying to come out with false information or look things in the wrong way. And uh, I, I, I believe they're still staying under the standard, too, that it's two teeth. If they can't get it out of that, they leave it alone. That they're going to have you know some respect for the courts, I guess, somewhat. But in the interest of all of humanity and what Egypt meant to humanity, it's probably looked at as being okay. Um, just a weird question for you all right now. If uh, you found out that they thought that you and your people were real important uh, right during this period of time that we're in right now, and they wanted to dig you up and check you all out just to see what the hell happened and thought that you were important about it, it would probably be something more prestigious. Uh, you'd look down from heaven and go, wow, they, they think I'm important. You wouldn't think that you're being defiled or anything, really, would you? I mean... They're, they're not trying to tomb rob you. That's the defiling situation. So, anyhow, let's uh, let's take a look at this. And uh, it's ancient Egyptian mummies. And uh, it's a bit gruesome. Not really for kids. But we'll start out with the oldest mummy as a pre-dynasty. And uh, this is Ginger. And uh, we'll run through some pictures here. And then I've got a video to show you that has more. And uh, like I said, they have 42 samples now. I believe I mentioned earlier, and uh, that are all viable out of all of them. Interesting effect, too. Let's take a look at these. Like blonde curly hair. Reddish hair. Seti. That's the reason I got this one. Doesn't he look very Roman? Almost a Caesar kind of look. That's Seti. Too dark common. So much is said about him, but he has, a, you know, warped features. And uh, it was looked at they had somewhat inbreeding going on, trying to keep the dynasty going. And uh, in doing so, he ended up club-footed and so on, a little bit buck-toothed. But they show his mom right after it, too. Or his grandmother, Queen Ty. And so you can tell here, she's got long auburn, reddish brown hair, kind of. You can see in her features, too. Well, well she's, I mean, look at her skin. Even with the natron stuff that always turns black, she's actually still kind of stark white. So, you know, more and more of these are showing up to be Caucasians. So yeah, and you yeah. Um, man, that almost looks like Abraham Lincoln, doesn't it? That's weird. Okay, got an earring still in. Well, man, I, I hate to keep stopping this, people. I do, but I mean, it sounds weird to say something like this, but uh, she's pretty. You know, she's got this kind of. I don't know, like, almost like a schoolgirl look in an old English book, you know, where it shows the little girl, and if she just had a bow in her hair. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe you don't see what I'm talking about. It's just the way her mouth is pursed and the way she looks. She looks happy, too. Apparently, they're getting real good at this because she's got a smile on her face, and they'll show you one in a minute that's called the Happy Mummy, and uh, you'll see why. <laughs> This is it right here. I mean, look at her. She's just smiling up a storm here. And uh, 
She's got the biggest grin on her face. And there she is again, too, with this lighter brown hair. It's kind of a chestnut with highlights in it. And uh, they said they used to dye their hair sometimes with henna and do things, but uh, it would only be like special times and ceremonies. But, uh, all right, let's, let's continue. <laughs> Yeah, I, that almost looks like a Caesar kind of thing, too. Kind of. Well, and look how stark white he is. Just almost just vampiric albino pale almost. But I'm sure that's just the weathering process and things. Just like the reddish places and the brownish charring. Red hair. Wow, look at this. Now, this is uh, cool. She's got this like forehead band on that's real intricate. I don't know if it's showing up in the pictures, but real intricately woven there. And this huge earring almost has a pirate effect, right? Arr, you know, has this Johnny Depp kind of thing going on with it. But uh, I, I would think this is a woman, of course. But she has a grayish brown hair. It's real long. A little bit of a body wave to it somewhat, but it's kind of a grayish brown. I see some brown still in it, and I wonder if that's henna painted on it. I have seen a few mummies now uh, that have gray hair, and they paint bands on it, almost like band, 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 down the hair in little groups, uh, and they do it with henna. And I don't know why they don't paint the whole hair, and they do it with little bands or something. There has to be something symbolic with that. But it's only done on certain people. It's only been on a few mummies that I've seen, and it doesn't seem to be real evident on all of them. Or even most, so. Real good teeth, so you can see the teeth, and that's where they're getting it from. I don't know, that looks like some Greco-Roman dude too, doesn't it? Definitely. Now, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry I keep stopping this. That, that looks like Caesar. If you told me they found Caesar... And this was his mummy that had been taking down there. I would, I'd have to agree. And look how his hair is plaited to his head, but got that curl thing, you know, that Romanesque look. I, that's just really got to be what it is. So, huh. Let's continue. striking me that some of these guys have a smile on their face that they they went through the trouble on these mummies to where they look real contented and happy and stuff so kind of messed up on that one eh, didn't do a good job on that one curly hair but okay now that looks uh, like it's off of a Greek statue that really looks like somebody popped the head off a Greek statue. You'd have to, like, flip that under and show me the neck part and say, oh, there's bone in there. That almost looks just like a Greek statue. And look at the eyes. How they're still in a solemn pose. He almost looks like he's just about to speak. Like he's going, yeah. That's weird. got an odd headdress with it. Some of these very curly looking... That's a South American. That's not even an Egyptian. That's Egyptian. Plaited hair. Long curly hair there. Almost a smile. So, that's pretty neat. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's check this out real quick. And uh, I've got this in one of my other videos. Are they going to make an ad go? Are you serious? I apologize, people, but it is the holidays. So they're throwing this in their bed. But check this out. Hi, it's Mike Chen. What we're going to be talking about in this video is what some people may consider a controversial subject, as with most videos on this channel, but also one worthy of study. And before we start, I'm going to raise this question to everybody. Do we really know, genetically speaking, where ancient Egyptians came from? And the answer is, we have our theories, but not really. We also don't know what exactly they look like. When we try to imagine what ancient Egyptians may have looked like, some of us immediately picture a civilization populated by citizens with dark skin and dark hair 
care, but was that truly the case? At the time when graves of mummies were discovered more than a hundred years ago, a general expectation was that the early Egyptians were of Negroid origin. But in our enlightened and technologically advanced era, where we possess greatly enhanced capabilities in forensic science, certain mind-blowing archaeological discoveries and evidences have emerged that are not exactly supportive of the seemingly universal known fact that dynastic Egyptians were exclusively of African origin. All shades of hair were found around the time of ancient Egypt's civilization, from brown to blonde and even auburn and red. Today, these hair colors are found among the people of North Europe and North Africa and are indicative of Caucasian origins. So does this mean that there were fair-skinned, blonde, or red-headed ancient Egyptians prior and during Egypt's dynastic period? There is a theory suggesting that prior to 2000 BC, Egyptians were of Caucasian European ethnicity. This is supported by the physical anthropology of the oldest mummies that have ever been found. The busts and the statues of several pharaohs and their wives, the colored wall paintings discovered, and the descriptions provided in historical accounts. As early as 5000 BC, the majority of the Caucasian European occupants of Egypt were believed to have begun abandoning the increasingly warm country and headed to the cooler climates of Europe. Then after about 1500 BC, the population in the area became increasingly mixed, with the Nubians from the south of Egypt, which explains the typical physical appearance and the genetic makeup of modern-day Egyptians. This theory strongly refutes the ideas of Afrocentrism with the presentation of several archaeological, anthropological, and forensic evidences, three of which I am about to discuss with you now. One of the most famous cases of mummies of ancient Egypt that had red or blonde hair is one of the Ghibelline pre-dynastic mummies which is housed in the British Museum. Commonly referred to by curators in the public as Ginger, this ancestor from ancient Egypt died more than 5,000 years ago in the late pre-dynastic period around 3400 BC or earlier. His mummified body was found in a cemetery at Ghibli, Egypt, with his toes and fingernails perfectly preserved. He was given the nickname of Ginger because of his golden curly hair, which interestingly looks similar to the curly locks often seen on Greek and Roman sculptures. Mm -hmm. And although his body is stained from buried in the sand for more than 5,000 years, this Egyptian ancestor looked like he once had yellowish white skin. Another example of uncovered red-haired mummies from ancient Egypt are the ones found among thousands of other mummies by a group of archaeologists in the Fagal Gamis graveyard in the south of Cairo. Archaeologists from Brigham Young University in Utah have been excavating that cemetery for about 30 years, and they have established that many of the mummies they have found date back to 30 BC, which is around the time when the Roman or Byzantine Empire ruled Egypt. Researchers reached the conclusion that there were more than a million bodies within the cemetery, and it was revealed that the cemetery was not intended for royalty, but for the common people. There were many interesting discoveries that were uncovered in the excavation of this ancient cemetery and the analysis of the mummies found buried in the area. And one of them is the observation that the mummies appear to be clustered together according to their hair color. They found blonde-haired mummies in one area, while another area was filled with red-haired ones. This led to the overall impression that the clusters of mummies buried by hair color in the graveyard could be indicative that these people once belonged in the same family groups and therefore were related with each other. This also speaks volumes of the possibility that a small but significant part of ancient Egypt's population were red-haired or blonde-haired mm. individuals. The last case of red-haired Egyptian mummies we will be discussing is the preserved body of Ramses II, who is arguably the most famous of all the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. Ramses II ruled as a pharaoh of the 19th dynasty between 1279 to 1213 BC and is believed to be the one who reigned when the children of Israel were liberated through the prophet Moses. In 1975, the Egyptian government tasked French scientists to attempt the preservation of Ramsey's mummy. This opened an opportunity for researchers to determine his age, body condition, health, diet, and even his racial affinities. There were those who were of the opinion that Ramses II was black. However, according to the study conducted by Professor P.F. Scotty and his research team, microscopic examinations of the pharaoh's hair roots showed that his hair had natural red pigments, which meant that in his younger years, Ramses II was a redhead. Moreover, it was also determined that Ramses had wavy hair, and a combination of these features meant that the pharaoh was fair-skinned. While there have been enough evidence for some experts to conclude that some ancient Egyptians were blonde or red-haired, there are still many researchers who believe that there were no ancient Egyptians whose natural hair weren't dark brown or black. Some of these skeptics argue that mummies found with light-colored strands of hair can be explained by the effects of the mummification process itself. And so, to find a definitive answer
answer to this intriguing question about the effects of the mummification process on human hair, Dr. Jeanette Davey from the Victoria Institute of Forensic Medicine in Australia decided to conduct experiments on 16 hair samples from men and women aged between 4 and 92 years old. Most of the hair samples were dark colored, but for comparison, one of the sample strands was gray while another one was fair. There was also one strand with henna on it. Davey and her colleague, retired industrial chemist Alan Elliott, also prepared some powder of synthetic natron for their experiments. Natron was a type of salt that was applied on the bodies during the process of mummification to dry them out. It has also been linked to the supposed change in hair color of the human remains. Davey and Elliot covered the hair samples in synthetic natron for 40 days, the same amount of time believed to be required back in ancient times to dry out the human body. When the 40-day period had passed, the samples were removed from the salty powder and after undergoing microscopic analysis, it was determined that there was no change in the color of the hair samples at all. For Dr. Mm. Davey, the result of her experiments is convincing enough to say that fair-haired Egyptians did exist in ancient Egypt. It's just that finding fair-haired Egyptian mummies has so far been a very rare occurrence. Some ancient Egyptians could have been blue-eyed blondes or redheads, and while the country during those times was not as multicultural as several parts of the world are today, there were certainly a variety of racial mixes that made the existence of fair-skinned Egyptians possible. Now, is this discovery particularly earth-shattering? Well, it depends on which vantage point you are analyzing the evidence from. It remains a fact that a majority of Egyptians today are dark-haired and dark-skinned. These archaeological, anthropological, and forensic evidences merely attest to a not-so-implausible reality that at some point in its ancient history, there were a portion of people in Egypt who were red or blonde-haired and fair-skinned. I mean, in our modern world, individuals of different race and ethnicities encounter and mingle with each other like a natural habitat, so is it really that surprising that our ancestors did the same thousands of years ago? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Mm, very interesting. Very revealing. And now I'm just waiting for more data on the other 42 that they've done. But the paper data that came out was no change. And there was a couple of them that had a 92% match with Eastern European blonde-haired, blue-eyed people. One of the ones they mentioned would be like this would be Prince Harry. So isn't that odd that you would make that correlation rather than one that would be sub-Saharan. Like if you like it. If you don't, I'm sorry. Appreciate y'all.